Coming up in this week's episode, we have a disaster with our electrics. Well, okay. No. Yeah! yeah! Woo! <laughs> Adam fights the fish of his life. Rod snapped. No, it didn't, did it? Snapped in half. The rod snapped. And we go sailing anyway. Uh, it's been a bit of drama as you can see behind me we are no longer outside or in the anchorage on the island because we discovered something very very Luke's an idiot very yeah. very shortly after uh, the anchor we finished the anchor I shall show you what we discovered we were running the engine to do the anchor and I noticed on the battery monitor there was no amps coming from the alternator I thought that's strange. So I had a look, poking my way around the alternator, and I found this wire. A burnt out wire on the back of the alternator, brand new. Uh, yeah, shocking. Yesterday when we were moved into the island, I could swear I could smell some sort of heated plastic and it was this burning at the back of the alternator and it stopped working um, we chopped off the cable uh, it's on the it's on the battery lead on the back of the alternator and I've done some research online and it's either shortened out but I can't find anywhere where it is shortened out anywhere on a bit of metal or the alternator onto the engine or anything like that. I can't find anything. Uh, the other thing is a loose crimp connection. I think the loop when we took this wire off, the crimp just fell off. So I think this was not crimped properly. Uh, when a wire is not crimped properly, it you get a lot of amps going through a little tiny bit of the wire, which causes it to heat up and burn. Luckily, this didn't catch on fire. So this is a great lesson. Uh, so we've moved from the island over to outside the the river mouth where we were where we were before and tomorrow morning we're gonna get a new wire and we're gonna crimp it and put it on the alternator and hopefully fingers crossed there is no more problems because we are dying to get this circumnavigation of New Zealand underway. So we're off today now we've got a length of cable and we're gonna go and see if we can get it crimped to both ends off the electrician we haven't got a hydraulic crimper so we can't really do it ourselves we want a proper job done basically we've managed to get into the marina we have sneaked our way in we did call them on the radio but they didn't answer and it looks like it's open the marine place for the electrical is just up by there we're gonna tie the tendon on here and hopefully it'll be okay Right behind us in the boot there is doing our lugs. Hopefully it doesn't cost too much. Yeah. It's only two lugs. We'll see. Hot today, isn't it? Good day, sir. New wire, new lugs, heat wrapped. 20 bucks, cash it out. This has saved us. Hopefully this will do the job if we won't have any more issues where the old cable was you can see it's actually burned to put a little hole in the plastic surrounding of this so we're hoping when we plug it all in well first of all we're hoping it won't overheat and melt and second of all we're hoping the alternator still works so i put all the wires back on put the new wire there um it's all really tight it's not touching the engine or anything put that on there put that on there put a new belt on it without teeth on there so it's just v-belt Really the belt's a little bit tight for my liking, but it's okay. Put it on the battery, that's nice and tight, that's tight, everything is tight. Um, if it blows up now, it blows up. Make it pressure.
So it is working, charging the batteries. Just got to keep a very close eye now on that new cable we put on. Make sure it doesn't start heating up. So I tested it. I don't dent smile yet. I think it's working and I'm really pleased. Good job. I'll keep an eye on that cable, the heat on the cable. Yeah, well, it's not heating at the moment. The alternator is 60 degrees and the cable is 30. Okay. With the alternator working, we decided to motor back over to Rangatoto Island. However, on the way, the alternator stopped working again. So the next day, we set about problem solving. I think, I think there's something wrong with our lead acid. Because when we get, when the alternator charges, the lead acid is going down to 12 volts when it should be saying up at 13.8. So whether, when that wire burns out on the back, whether it damaged the lead acid, I don't know. So. Luke's been at this now for about two hours since eight o'clock this morning. Just trying to solve this problem. Still no joy yet. Well, we haven't filmed much today because we've been super busy. Uh, worked on the alternator and the battery issues for, for issues for six hours, and basically we haven't got much anywhere really. Uh, tried loads of different things, tried disconnecting all this and reconnecting it all, you know, going through all the fittings and fixtures. Oops. I tried um, bypassing this switch, uh, that didn't work. Um, tried taking all these connections off and all those connections off and re putting the connections on, that didn't work. Checked uh, all the regulator settings and that didn't do anything. Um, plugging anything and re plugging everything back in. Uh, tried a different belt, tried three different belts, that didn't work. And the last test we done was quite interesting. Um, we got an external regulator with this alternator. Um, we bypassed the external regulator and used the internal regulator on this alternator. Uh, it, results were interesting. I'll start the batteries at 12.3 volts. Um, with the external regulator running, it barely gets up to 12.5 which says the alternator is not working properly or the regulator is not working properly. We don't know which one. But with the internal regulator of the, of the alternator, it quickly goes up to 13 volts, which you think is good, but we ran the engine for 15 minutes and I would expect that the starter battery to quickly go up to about at least 13.5 to 13.9 volts pretty quickly in 15 minutes, but it didn't. It went to 13 volts and then stopped the 13 volts and it held the charge. Uh, while it was holding power at 13 volts, I put one of the DCs on which will take 30 amps out of the alternator. Bearing in mind the alternator is 70 amps, so it should be easy to be able to hold, easy, easily be able to handle um, 30 amps getting taken out of it and charge and start a battery at the same time. But when I activated the DC charger to charge a lithium, um, the voltage quickly went down from 13 volts to 12.3 volts and then slowly down to 12 volts which is saying it's i i think what it's saying sort of maybe is the alternator has been damaged um what i think has happened is because that positive cable carrying 50 amps has burnt out on the back of the alternator and as it has burnt out and it's lost connection the 50 amps in the alternator has got nowhere to go and it damages the alternator i think that is what has happened you've been working all day in here yeah i haven't done that much so have i i've done my bit but i don't know anything about electrics looks to be working and chatting to phil as well first lot here being on the telephone and stuff like that yeah. that's what i think as well that alternator's been damaged. So as you all know, as Luke's explained today, we're still having problems with the engine, with, no, with the alternator charging. The alternator is not working at all now. It's not charging our lead acid or our lithium. So eventually the batteries are going to wear themselves down. But what about solar? Yeah, the lead acid will slowly go. This is at 12.3, yeah. but the lithium will The lithium always... will charge with solar. Yes. But eventually our starter battery, lead acid, will die so we've got a, a manual starting starting handle under the sink we're gonna 
manually start the engine with the with the handle i think the trick is we've got decompression levers on the top of the engine i'm going to push them so there's no compression start winding and then push the push the the compression back and whip the uh, the handle out and it should start so uh, we've never, done, this never done it we're giving it a go okay second attempt i need to spin it a lot faster did not i oh, i don't know what it should just start shouldn't it Shouldn't you turn it while it's going? Uh, maybe, yeah. Or will it take it out of your hand? It shouldn't do, should it? Because that, when that comes back out, it de-engages de it. Try it, it might yeah. just stop dead. Okay. With my hand, that stuff come off it. Eh? <sighs> no. No way, how can that go in? Later that evening, youths turned up and proceeded to blast tasteless music, so we were forced to up anchor and move across the bay. Morning, everybody. What are you doing now, Doug? Uh, well, we've gone into crisis mode on the boat, haven't we? The power and stuff. Because we haven't got an alternator. No. The weather for the next three or four days are set to be sunshine and showers so hopefully we're going to get enough sun to put power into our lithiums because we, there's no way other way of charging our lithiums at all we've got a freezer full of food a freezer yeah our posture and starlink so we have to limit our use of power of starlink it's christmas day we're having a christmas feast sunday did well yeah yeah look at this this is our Christmas dinner. Doesn't look lovely. Luke put flour in the gravy. Look at the state of that. Yeah, it didn't come out nice, but it was okay. You live and learn, didn't you? Oh, I never learned, that's a problem. Give it a taste. This is our Christmas time. Yeah. Um, just wish our mum could be here, but she's not. Um, yeah. The dinner's okay, isn't it? Yeah. We've had better, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit bland and uh, it's too much. It should have been. We wanted a roast thing, but we haven't got a roasting tray and we've got an oil neither. Because we've been so busy with electronics and stuff. So uh, we're not prepared to eat, but it's uh, nice, isn't it? Yeah. It's Christmas. Later that day, we moved back to our friend's mooring in Panmer to continue trying to fix our alternator. Fishing, Penmar River, and I've caught a monster. 20 minutes and I've been fighting this one. I don't know what it is, but I'm winning. We're on the mooring in Penmer River. I'm going to get an alternator sorted tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> oh, come on! Luke's turn to try and fight the beast. What has been double? Yeah. Pulling is all the time. I think he's hiding down there in something, isn't he? Pull him again. Oh, 
Adam's gone. He was <laughs> the fish, or whatever it was, it was taking all the line. So Adam's jumped in the tender, and the, the fish is pulling him. I think it's a stingray. He's pulling him out. He wants to try and retrieve the line, because there's no way we're going to get it in. <laughs> it's over. I just heard the line snap. And got towed over there, and then got towed over there. It was too big. Probably a stingray. The rod snapped. No, it didn't, did it? it snapped in half. The rod snapped. The rod snapped. That's Keith's favourite rod, Ed. There's a ray. Did you know? Seen it. Saw it. Recording. Yeah. I got it up to the little ball weight I had and then there was about a metre of line left of the hook on it. It kept surfacing, doing that, and it was just a thing like that, flat. It a, a ray, it must have been this big ray. Just kept taking and taking and taking. The rod snapped, dug into my leg. Got away. So strong and big. No chance. Good morning everyone. Today, I will say today, don't I? Today we're at Electro Charge here just on the outskirts of Auckland and we've taken we've taken an alternator here to be bench tested. Uh, he's literally testing it now for us to see if there's anything wrong with it. We are back on the boat. The guy tested it. I'm sorry I couldn't film any of it. He wouldn't even let us look, at, look into his workshop. I think, uh, I don't know why. But he's tested it and what's the conclusion, Luke? Well, as soon as he spun it up on the bench, the alternator was making a really bad whirring noise and he said it's either the stator or the rectifier that's gone in the okay. alternator. Yeah. He said, well, you're going to try and fix it in the next few days. Yeah, so give me a couple of days, he's going to try his best to fix it for us because he knows that it's from a boat and we're living on the boat and it's our only means of power if it's cloudy, we're struggling. Update for you lovelies. We've just left Panmer on the mooring and we still haven't got our alternator. Can you see me? Still haven't got our alternator fixed. We took it to an alternator repair guy and he couldn't do it. It's a bad time of the year to get parts for it as well. So we've decided to leave here and we're going to sail further down the coast and by the time we get another 100 miles or so down the coast from island hopping over the next couple of days, the new year would have New Year's Eve, New Year's Day would have passed and then things will start reopening and then we can get our alternator repaired further on down the line. Otherwise we're just sitting there on a mooring doing nothing so we might as well go out, get sailing, make some videos, show all you what we're doing, take you out on the adventure rather than sitting on the mooring waiting for stuff to open. It makes perfect sense to me. Okay so the situation is we've got to go up here, out three miles up to get around this other island here to get around to protective bay we've got about half a lot of current with us running up in this island that's why it looks quite wavy we've got around 20 to 25 knots of wind hoping there's gonna be enough angle to sail up there if not a couple of tacks is gonna be in order Very surprising, more tide coming out of here than we thought. But some of these waves are pretty steep. And it's raining. He's going up and down like mad, that's that. Sailing boat.
easy then, really. Yeah, surprising. Didn't know we'd be able to do this. You said without tide, no chance. Now wind's coming round a bit now. We'll be able to get a bit of head sail out. We're doing yeah. 5.2 knots, didn't that? And we gave it 30% chance. That was it, all we gave it. Who looks like fools now? Today is in fact New Year's Eve and we're going to have a little celebration tonight because tomorrow we're sailing 40 miles. So we're going to only have a little celebration but happy New Year's Eve day. beautiful this morning. It was lovely this morning. It's going to be beautiful today, tomorrow as well. Yeah. Just around that point there, nearly there. And then in to the bay. We're hoping it's going to be nice in there. Say it then, Ant. Here. It's not great. Didn't realise there'd be such build up during the day. But the wind coming in tonight from the southwest, over there, it wasn't really much. Many places we could go. Yeah. It won't take long for this to. It's been blowing pretty north all day, so the wind has got, the sea has got a lot of energy, but it won't take long for this to go down. I reckon a couple of hours and it'll just be totally different. Yeah. Well, we shall see, won't we? We shall see indeed. Well, I'm actually in bed. It's 10 o'clock, can't even see the light. Can't even see the clock, I don't know why I'm looking that way, it's 10 o'clock, this anchorage is uh, calmed down a hell of a lot, it's quite calm now, tomorrow we sail for the Great Barrier Island, Great Barrier Island, uh, I've had three points, it is New Year's Eve, uh, thank you for all the amazing support this year, really appreciate it, and join us next, in the next episode, where we actually sail in. Yes, we are actually sailing instead of messing around with electronics. See ya. I think we should go around that blob there. There's salmon in there, look. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share. It really helps us out. A huge thank you to all our amazing, incredible, supportive patrons for making these episodes possible. Without you, we would not be on this huge adventure.